Hey, welcome to this episode of The Complete Advisor. Dennis Madden, your host. I am so glad that you're here. On today's show, it's, you know, it's a rare opportunity when we get to talk to really an industry insider. Uh, today we've got Dave Schliesman. Uh, he works for Allianz. He's been at Allianz for years. He has worked with the creme de la creme, the best advisors out there. And we're going to talk about his observations on the industry, where we're at, where we're going, and the things that separate um, you know, the, the regular advisors from the elite advisors. Let's take a listen. Dave, I'm excited to dive into this topic of why successful advisors fail. You were talking a little bit about some things that you have on your uh, in your office uh, evaluation, but welcome. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's um, I love working with advisors. I love mm -hmm. um, the more successful, the more I'm call it attracted to because I'm fascinated by their work. They do yeah. things that I would never do and I couldn't do. So I've, I've always admired top producers um, and, and how they do their business. And what you find are their common traits that a lot of the really successful mm -hmm. ones have, and then there's there's others. And I, I start with the fact that they're entrepreneurs. Yep. They're risk takers, right? They, they, they own their own business, and they decided at some point in time, I'm going all in on my own skill set. Yeah. Right? Everything they every all of their success starts and ends with them kicking things off. Right? I love that's one thing. I love that too, the entrepreneur point. And that's that's why when I watch a show, I love Shark Tank. Oh yes. And so yeah. I'm always I am always in awe of people who um who have an idea. One, the, the creativity is awesome. But to take a, hey, I've got an idea to a product, to being able to like, you know what, we're going to take the, our 401k, we're going to take the kids' college fund, and we're putting all the chips on right. on Dave Schliesman, and we're going. And that's what it, that's what an advisor does too. Every single day. And, and, and I'll say they, and they, every month, every dollar they're spending in the business they're doing that same exercise, whether yep. it's the first day they started or the next month, they're saying, I'm going to invest X amount in marketing money, right? Whether it's TV, radio, uh, you know, advertising, branding, staffing, do mm -hmm. I decide to add a person or not, right? All those have to go into the equation. And at the end of the month, they have to make payroll. They have to feed their families. And, yep. and, and so as I see that, I watch that and I have a complete admiration for those, especially the degrees of success that you have with so many different top yeah. producers. The, 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 other, the other thing that I always think of from a, it's almost, um, I guess it's almost like a mind exercise. Um, and you've seen this from, so your perspective is going to be great because you've worked very intimately with advisors when you started in your career yeah. uh, to seeing, you know, to moving up the ladder and seeing different levels and seeing them from different perspective. I'm always fascinated by the mindset of a top producer where, and, if, and you're listening to the show, so you are an advisor, so you know how this works. Um, on the one hand, you're a rainmaker Absolutely. for your office. You know, it's crazy, Dave. Uh, so we've got some younger employees and I said rainmaker and they didn't, I had to explain that too. <laughs> um, but so they're the rainmaker for the office. And, you know, as they, as they bring in business, they build their practice and more and more, they, they create their own equals, ecosystem, like their own, For sure. uh, you know, their own gross domestic product. Uh, and I think on one hand, from the, psycho the psychological standpoint, it's got to go to your head a little bit. Like, holy smokes. You know, I am, I am, the, the, I am the king of all I see here. This yes. is my creation. Yes. But then I always think about, and, 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 and everyone's trying to get you to woo you for your business. And then you go the flip side, though, that like, say on a Sunday night, you're laying there and you've done the math. You're like, okay, to meet payroll, I need to do X amount of business. I need to bring in X amount of business. If I divide that up by 52 weeks a year, to, so 48, because I'm going to take a couple weeks off. And then you start doing that math and you're like, wait, it's Wednesday night and I didn't sell anything the first two days. I have to imagine that that yin and yang has got to go, you almost drive you crazy. It, 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 that's the part that fascinates me. And I think your your uh, example of a rainmaker is perfect because every day they're making rain, right? And mm -hmm. some days they make more rain than the next. But yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the month, they have to make X amount of rain to pay the payroll, et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting not to talk Allianz, you know, forever or whatever, but we run these premium plus events or in the old days we called them fire sales. Oh, yeah. All that was was a reason to make more rain, yep. right? And to this day, that's all it is. It's like it gives, seeding the clouds. It's, just, it's all it is, right? Yeah. And, and it's a reason for the client, for the producer to go see the client to say, 
you, if you make these decisions by this period of time, this is when this is available, and if so, and as a result, you know, they bring in billions of dollars. Little, little, yeah, sense, yeah. Of, little sense of urgency to, to may help people um, move a decision along yeah. a little quicker. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I brought you here uh, into the podcast room. So I was looking at an article, and I'm curious. I'm going to throw these out to you. Uh, this article I was reading was talking about um, seven reasons why successful advisors fail. We won't hit all seven. There's a couple that I really want to hit. Um, and so one of them that I thought was interesting, so your perspective, uh, I think one of the first big ones, and I'm going to skip down in the article, it was, it was talking about um, neglecting professional development and continuing ed- education. Yeah. So yeah. give me your perspective. What do you see out there? Yeah, and, and let me maybe start a little broader than that. If you take this idea, the, the advisor, the producers, this entrepreneur, they're the risk takers, right? Um, they're typically running fast to achieve success, yeah. and the rest of their team is like, hold on, I can't keep up. Right, mm-hmm. and 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 there's reasons why they can't keep keep up. One, they may not be as good or as talented. They may not have the vision that the producer has. Right? Maybe the the advisor hasn't communicated what they're trying to do. Right? Maybe they haven't. To your point on 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 that bullet is um, they don't have that education. Right? So they don't know what it is exactly the advisor wants to have yeah. happen. And so um, what I found is if if the advisors are lay out the vision. This is what we're trying to accomplish, right? Um, communicate across the organization. Empower them. So if I'm in charge of developing leads, do I have full control over that? Or are you just telling me what to do and I'm executing what to do, right? Yeah. And, and so that's where oftentimes some of these some of these things can can fall down or be incredibly successful. Phil Jackson coached Michael Jordan, but Phil and, and the Bulls when they won their sixth. Sure. See there. Uh, but Phil Jackson played for the Knicks early in his career and didn't, you know, didn't last very long. Best coaches aren't always the best players. Yeah, Steve Kerr um, played for the Bulls. He was successful, but he wasn't an All Star or anything like that. Right. So, and you mentioned you mentioned advisors that run fast. So I've I've had that experience where I've met advisors that are amazing at selling. They are amazing when they're in front of people. They close them. They're able to communicate. They just can't manage worth yeah worth yeah. poo poo. Yeah. Um, how big of a how big of a deal do you think that comes into play? You know, I I have in my office a um, it's this management tool that a person taught me years ago, and I, I use it to this day. And on on call it evaluating your management and how it's descending within your team, and and it's called able to, allowed to, and want to. And so able to is is essentially defined as do you have the skill set necessary to do the job. Mm-hmm. Right. If you say, Dave, you have to uh, be an actuary. Well, then I need to probably be good at math. Yeah. Right. Uh, or if I'm in creative design, I need to have some artistic ability. Right. Whatever that case is. If your job is to be a public speaker, you need to be really good at communicating. Do I have the technical expertise necessary is able to. The want to to me is oftentimes the most powerful is, frankly, how are you paying me? Right? Mm-hmm. Am I paid on developing leads if that's what you want me to do? Or are you saying, no, it's really just on profitability or it's on some other metric that it's hard for me to relate to, right? So how am I paid and how are you recognizing me? If you say every single month we have whoever generates the most sales up on the wall, great, I know it matters. But if you're giving me a hard time because I took my lunch at 11 instead of 1130, yep. that's not my, my recognition, right? Yep. So able to, want to, and allowed to. Allowed to is empowering the person to do the job, right? Yeah. Do, do you have the infrastructure, the technology? Do you have the time to do this, right? All within it. And if you follow those as a guideline, you can generally look at an employee and say, which one of those is missing? Are they motivated to do this or not? If not, are we paying them right and are we recognizing? Maybe they're just in the wrong seat. Maybe they're yeah. not the right person. But those are three tools that I'll use to this day to kind of overlay that and say, is it a reflection of me? Am I managing and guiding those? Or is there something with the with the, with the employee that I have that, that may yeah. not fit within that umbrella? I would, think that, I would think that if you're a successful advisor out there and you've got the skills and say you're a little earlier in your career, these might be... These might be those first. These might be questions that you actually need to ask of yourself. Correct. Taking on taking on a staff, because I've worked with some folks that are amazing, but they can't 
let go. So one, are you able well, to let go of something? Because yeah. that's how you got successful was maybe you control <clears throat> maybe you control everything, but are you able to let go? And then do you want to? Correct. Correct. I mean, the advisors we said earlier, they're the rainmaker. We know they can be successful. Yeah. They know how. And so oftentimes they want the control and they don't want to give up control. Well, if you're going to build your team, at some point in time, you have to give up control, empower that person, train that person, and then let them Make mistakes, fall down, learn, and continue to advance, right? But if every day you're overseeing going, oh, no, I'll do it, well, then eventually you can't grow. You can, I always use the analogy, you can grow to the extent that your arms can expand unless you empower, delegate, train, yeah. right, kind of a thing. And, and, and if you do that, you can generally be successful. That's kind of So what, what advice would you give to an advisor that has their rainmaker their control, they, they, yeah. they've gotten, they're successful right now, but they're probably getting close to burnout because they can't let go. Yeah. What advice would you give? Because it is, it would be, it is hard if you've got, you know, like you said, I can yeah. control this and I can control it better than anyone. How do you let, how do you let go of somebody who's coached I mean, a ton of people? I, well, I would start with um, self-assess and then yeah. maybe get a coach, right? And I know, you know, you folks here at Creative can help with things like that. But that's who can help you assess what you're doing. So start with yeah. your self, self, self assessment and then say, OK, how are things? Maybe maybe you do a survey of the team, sit down and have one on ones and understand, have a real conversation of what's doing, what's working, what's not working. What can I do better? How can I help you? Yeah. Right. And then you'll understand, are you getting real answers or not? Or there's other ways to find out what's really going on. How hard is it to sometimes put your big boy or, or if you're a lady listening, your big girl pants on? Because you're going to get feedback back, right? No question. And, and mo oftentimes people can be defensive, right? Mm -hmm. And to this day, I was taught years ago, every presentation I gave, I was, the, my boss was in the back writing notes on my presentation, mm -hmm. right? And I use it as a gift and it's wonderful. And to this day, I ask for that feedback with people that are in, I trust and have, we've built a relationship where they have no problem saying, you were really good here, but over here, you need some work. Perfect. Polish that right? up. Yeah. And we'll do that for presentations or different ways of communicating where you're regularly getting feedback. And I think it can become incredibly powerful. And I don't know, in you know smaller entrepreneurial offices, it's probably, I mean, if it's feedback, it's usually on the spot kind of thing, but it's yeah. not a sit down, let's have a Formal, you know, in, in the corporate world, performance evaluations yeah. and all that. But in the smaller, the point is, is, is the communication happening or not, whether it's formal or not, but give that employee their time to have a dialogue and, and, under, about and understand. Saying. Yeah. Um, OK, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about failure to adapt to changing client needs and market dynamics. As, as you and I both know, uh, since we both go back a long way here, uh, the world is different than it was the the last century uh, yeah. as it comes to our to our industry um how big do you think failure to adapt to changing client needs and market dynamics i i, I mean it starts with everyone gets com comfortable and content yep. right you you reach your level of success whatever it is right i want to make half million a year i want to make a million a year i want to make two million dollars a year whatever that number is or i want to sell x amount you get there then what yeah right they achieve their success and then at some point in time, what do you need to do to maintain that? Uh, do, do you want to keep growing? Or you're like, I'm going to get there and then I'm going to maintain, which is perfectly fine. But then what do you need to do to maintain? And you can't yeah. just be rinse and repeat because the world is changing. The market's changing. So at the end of the day, people get comfortable. They get content. And you have to constantly be looking at and reevaluate. The same way you got successful, right? You, you mm -hmm. created a process. You made adjustments. And then you rinse and repeat, well, you need to keep making those adjustments, even if you're comfortable, even if you've achieved that level of success, right? Reevaluating what you're doing to, to, to make sure you can continue yeah. that success going forward. What do you see? So you, you've bumped around with a lot of uh, big advisors. Yeah. What, what do you see when they, any, any commonality when you see them set their goals or you have conversations about their practice? Anything? Any? I, I'm totally catching you off guard yeah, with that question. Yeah. Uh, the commonality I see is the biggest advisors have a process in place, mm -hmm. and they have um, 
they've empowered and entrusted, right? And and the separation between them and those that have not maybe achieved that level of success is, yeah. is they still want to control everything and they're not ready to hire the next employee in their office. Do you th- right? So do you think so do you think when an advisor gets to a certain size and they start the, and they start following the the you know the able to the want to do you think at that part maybe at that point maybe their mindset starts to change into maybe more of a legacy play or you know I I've I've climbed the mountain now what am I going to do like yeah, I'm going to yeah. now I'm going to develop people and now I'm going to build a brand that outlives yeah. me or yeah yeah I, I guess you could think of it as in the legacy I think they're just the highly successful ones seem to never want to slow down. Yeah. They just go and go and go. So I don't think it's le- – I think it's maybe less I'm going to take this and pass it on. And yeah. Maybe there's a family member or something, right? Or maybe I'll take it and sell it, right? And there's, you're seeing more of that now in today's world yeah. than you did years ago. But I think they're just motivated to keep growing and building and developing and expanding and providing more value and services to the customer, which – as we're seeing in today's world, right? Yeah. You're talking about what's going on in the environment. Well, just providing one service may not be, a, you know, this recipe for success going forward, right? Yeah, the yeah the the looking at yeah you know, that that is a good uh, you know the failing to adapt to client needs because the you know what clients are expecting right. and we're all we're all cognizant of, I guess closing as many opportunities to our competition to right. to wedge their way in there. And of course we as advisors we want to be able to answer as many things as possible and then also build our as we build our business wall at chairs an important an important concept. Working hard and running fast, the danger then becomes burnout. Yeah. So how do you think any recommendations how big how big have you seen that? You know, work life balance. Oh yeah, no question. I mean and we, we, we preach that on our team. I think COVID taught us, right, uh, a, a little bit about that. And yeah. everyone was running hard, and then they said, okay, we can't, we have to run, but in a very different way, whether it's from home, the Zooms, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone started to say, let's adopt this European model where, oh, we actually go home for lunch, or we actually take time, or the siestas, or whatever. And yeah. and I think that was a bit of a, an awakening, <laughs> right, of of – of I would do employee one on ones, and we were walking outside. I was at my house going for a walk, and they're at their house going for a walk, and it was a way to reset, right? Yeah. And and I, um, yeah, you have to you have to have you can charge and charge and charge and have all the straight success. At the end of the day, for what, right? Exactly. Is it for your family? Great. Then go spend private. Or, you know, go spend your your your, your family time, but guard it. Right. You Definitely. still have to keep the lights on. You still have to keep your business, take care of your clients, but guard your time. Yeah. Right. And then provide flexibility, which is a bit of where the world has gone coming out of coming out. Of yeah. Uh, you know, my uh, so I have two brothers that are like ridiculously successful advisors. Yeah. And uh, one of them has a, is a very hard charger. And so his joke always was that he worked half days, you know, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Funny. Interesting. Uh, but do you, have you ever had to tap? Uh, so you've got the opportunity to have some great relationships with top advisors. Have yeah. you ever had to, you know, tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hey, Bob? Uh, no, but I probably could, right? But but part of, part of I, I, I think they, I think that the best, call it, they, they, they charge hard and then they relax hard. Right? Yeah, they do. Right? Yeah. They, tend to, they tend to do it all in maybe a bit of extremes. Mm-hmm. But as long as they're living that balance, right? But then make sure you're taking care of your family as well. And that maybe sometimes, n- not necessarily with advisors, but with successful people in general, they, they double down on one lane, but they're forgetting about everything else going on here. Yeah. And you have to kind of keep it, keep it in, in check. All right, I'm going to throw two final questions at you. Okay. And these are coming right off the cuff here. So um, as you look at top advisors, what if you were a top advisor out there with a practice, what would, here's question one, what excites you as you look at towards, just put your big 10,000-foot hat on as you look at the industry and what's going on, what keeps you up at night? Um, the first thing that excites me is people need advice. Mm-hmm. More than ever, right? Absolutely. There was the old, old dot com computer. I'll do it myself, right? Mm-hmm. Manage your own. Really? I mean, is that is that realistic? And do you really want to be an expert in everything, uh, financial related, insurance related, and all the things going on? Yep. It's 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 hard enough as an advisor, let alone 
Some are doing it there. So. I think that. I think that they, I, you're so spot on. I think that there is more people that do the initial, well, I'm going to look that up. Correct. And they get, they get about as far as I have gotten as on the ceiling that's Correct. in our master bathroom that I need to repair, right. repair something. I've looked it up a ton, yeah. but I have not done a thing. That's the thing. And, and there's a point in time where everyone will need that advice. Yep. Maybe they don't when they're in their 30s or 40s, whatever that age is. But at some point in time, if they're going to plan to retire, they need your advice. They just don't know it yet, right? Yep. And then when you do your marketing to get in front of them, now it's just a matter of them trusting you to, mm-hmm. to provide that advice or not, right? It's like going to the doctor. Well, just because they're the doctor doesn't mean they're your doctor. Right. Yeah. And that same thing with your financial advisor. And there's so there's more people retire. Talk about getting excited. There's more people retiring. There's more money. There's more uncertainty. There's more volatility. And yet we're in this incredible business where we have solutions for these folks. To me, yeah. that I, I, I in today in the index annuity world. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. It's the probably the single best time we've ever had in our history to, to be in this business with the way the products work today, the way the market is, the interest rates, the value in these products is is the best we've ever had yeah. in, in, our, in our industry. How do you think, before we before you yeah. answer that yeah. last one, so now you, you, you poked a thought there. Yeah. Um, how do we get more people, more younger advisors in the business? It's where we're, we're seeing it. We're seeing the younger advisors right now as called the junior advisor. Yeah. In, in is that the, the model? Product, you think? I think that's the best. And then you're seeing yeah. it in some of the um, uh, maybe the multi-level marketing type type organizations where they're bringing on different folks. But I think the junior advisor is a great job because you're going in. You're, you you know we talked about rainmakers. You mean I get to work alongside a rainmaker? Yeah. Are you kidding me? So I want to be a baseball player, and you're going to put me in the in the in the all star shortstop's office every single day. Yep. That's a great analogy, right? That to me, that's the best way. And I think you know some of the some some advisors are now finding great success bringing in that a junior advisor. But it goes back to what we talked about. Now you have to train. Now you have to let educate. Go. You yep. can't close every sale. You have to let them close every sale. And guess what? They're going to miss out on the ones you would make. They're going to miss out on, yeah. and that's okay. Just as long as okay, let's evaluate what happened. Teach, learn, coach, and eventually they'll figure it out. Or you yeah. find out they're not the right person. You find someone else. There's more people retiring than coming in early, and I, I get it. But at the end of the day, there's enough advisors to provide advice. There's not shortage of advisors, right? Yeah. So even if there's less advisors, people need more advice, and that just means you have more appointments, you have more customers, and We'll solve that problem. Boom. Right. All right. So, so now we have to go to the now we have to go to the, the the second part. If you're a top advisor, what keeps you up at night? I think it goes back to what we talked about of you're making it rain mm-hmm. every day, every month. How do you make sure it's still gonna rain next month and the yep. following month and the following month? And are you generating enough rain to pay your bills and your coverage yep. in an environment where everything is changing, yep. right? So what do you have as a process to recalibrate, right? Mm-hmm. You're driving your car, you're getting the engine you know, oil changed, you're getting your brake pad, you're taking it in for service for a regular checkup. We go to the doctor for, what is your financial advisor's checkup? You give a, you give a checkup to your client, what are you doing to check yeah. your practice? That's right. a, that is such a good point because you see that in sales all the time of where you're up. It's it's just circular. It's almost like the economy. Like, oh, yeah. things are going great. My dad used to say it worked so well, I stopped doing it. Right. And so it's like, oh, I've got so many leads. Well, we don't have to put any out. And Correct. then it's right. We got comfortable. Fan. We got content. Yep. So we've got a we've got an episode. I think maybe it's episode fourteen, uh, where one of our top advisors that we've worked with for years talks about how he he views his practice like a train. Like, you know, once you get a train going in motion, it's easy to keep, it's easier to keep a train going. But if you let that train stop it's hard to get and then restart, which is why he says he works, he works so doggone hard, but sure. it makes a lot of sense. Sure. Now, with that being said, my friend, I think this is a great spot for us to, to wrap the episode. I appreciate you coming on. I think this is very valuable content that we've talked about. And I think if you're an advisor out there, no matter where you are uh, in your practice, Taking a look at those three things, the the able to, want to, and I just forgot that they're allowed, allowed to, to, allowed, to, allowed to, to, letting people do that. Um, you need to eval- self-evaluate first and see if you're able to 
you know, maybe you don't, maybe, maybe you're the guy that doesn't hire people because you can't manage it. And, and that's okay too. Yeah. And that'll yeah. save you a whole ton of stress. Yeah. Cause then what's yeah. going to happen if you're that guy or gal that can't let go, all you're going to do is end up having to fire a whole bunch of people. Cause you're going to be frustrated because they'll never live up to what you want. Right. 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 Um, but if you are on the other side of that, you know, that is find it, like find a coach, a good mentor. That's a great, that's great advice. Self-evaluate and then follow those rules through. So that being said, Dave, thank you so much for being on here. I'd love to have you back next thank time. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, and uh, for everybody else, uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, don't forget, uh, like, follow um, the episode, the podcast. That way you're uh, kept up to date. Anytime we drop a new episode, boom, you know about it. We're on YouTube, Spotify. Am, uh, we're on Amazon. We're on Apple. We're on iHeartRadio, even Pandora. We're anywhere you like to consume podcasts. You can watch us. Uh, also would love to have your comments too. Uh, I read them and I take them to heart. Well, I take them. I don't know that I take them to heart. I mean, I have thick skin. I'm a grown up <laughs> right, for goodness right. sake. But any uh, anything you'd like to see us cover, we'd love to know. So we will see you next time. Thanks, Thank Dave. You. Thank you.